Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula this weekend on November 17th. <laughs> yes, November 17th. Uh, so we got some news items. I got some weather things to talk about as well. Um, I don't have any city council for you guys, so I use that time to make a uh, nice little musical ending for you guys at the later end of the show so be aware of that as well so let's kick things off with some weather it's also Flagstaff Friday so I'll get to that in a little bit and pre-critic blah 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 a lot of other things happening but let's kick off with some weather it is currently 28 degrees outside your high is going to be 37 your low is going to be 28 80 percent chance of snow showers if you've uh, dusted off all the snow from your car then it's about that time for some snowfall with a winter advisory warning which is going to go on well until 11 a.m this morning so not much going on there but of course uh, saturday you're going to be a high of 39 degrees and then of course sunday is going to uh, teeter with an even higher 41 so this weekend may uh, be a great weekend to enjoy as well but be aware as we uh, dive into the Monday uh, Sunday night we'll be getting that 20 to 50 percent chance of rain going into the week so yeah that's kind of what's happening with weather um, there's a lot of good activities and other stuff that are happening as well so I'll get to that but let's kick off some things that are happening with the news um, the University of Montana uh, Board of Regents uh, uh, Montana Board of Regents who uh, basically uh, who were tasked with uh, uh, basically appointing a new president of the University of Montana, have officially chosen Seth Bodnar, uh, an executive with General Electric. He will be the University of Montana's incoming president. After another process of bringing a handful of candidates to the University of Montana and having MCAT livestream all the candidates from the UC Theater, Bodnar is a Rhodes Scholar with two master's degrees from the University of Oxford. He is a Green Beret who graduated first in his class uh, from the U.S. Military Academy in West Point. Um, Regents spent no, uh, basically spent no time in deciding in favor of the 38-year-old when what usually takes a couple days just took like one day. They were just like met up and just like, yeah, he's cool, right? Like, yeah, good. Uh, <laughs> so the regents approved a salary of $313,845 for Bodnar. On par with the Montana State University Bozeman president, uh, weighted Crusoe's salary, and that of interim UM president Sheila Stearns. Of course, plus he got to, to basically to live in a house and a car as well. Um, not live in the car, but use a car provided from the University of Montana. The University of Montana is a flagship college, and that's pretty much why he gets paid more than most university presidents as well. Um, it's good to be in charge of schools, uh, but of course, n just not anything else um, in the school as well. So that's a little too biased right at the, there at the end. But who cares? Let's move on to the state news. Um, remember when uh, medical marijuana was supposed to be a thing in Montana? Well, some new re uh, regulations have been thrown down. The rules provide new information about how the industry will would be regulated in areas like employment, uh, product tracking and testing, security and fees. They focus on production, sales and testing side of a business rather than patients. But be aware, just because uh, a lot of times um, you subscribe to medical marijuana, there might be some jobs out there that don't allow it because they're more of a, uh, na a national federal corporate type job. So they might be uh, no to certain medical marijuana because of certain avenues in terms of health care um, within your uh, federal position may not allow the use of medical marijuana. Uh, so, so basically, so far, 29 states have legalized recreational or medical use of marijuana. Uh, so, uh, some people say that it pr uh, basically uh, using from these 29 states in Montana, it provides blueprints, especially for more in uh, intensive parts of Montana programs like testing. Uh, lawmakers set an effective date of April. 30th, 2018, for provisions like testing and tracking. Uh, the state health department will be talking about these new rules and regulations in a public hearing on November 30th at the Department of uh, Health and Human Services building in Helena. So they're going to be talking about that on November 30th. So that's what's happening there. So let's talk about some national news. So in national news, well, <laughs> I thought this was pretty funny. It, it, it's it's the uh, the definition of irony. The Keystone XL pipeline has reported has reported a spill in South Dakota. Trans Canada, the company that owns and operates the Keystone pipeline, said that an estimated 210,000 gallons or 5,000 barrels of oil have spilled near the small town of Amherst, South Dakota. Trans Canada crews detected a, a drop of pressure in, uh, at about 6 a.m. Um, th Thursday morning um, and shut down the pipeline. It runs from Headsley, Alberta, Canada to uh, Cushing, Oklahoma and Wood River, uh, P Potoka, um, 
And uh, Am okay, Amherst is about 200 miles south of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and about 25 miles from the state border with North Dakota. In the uh, in the statement, Trans America Trans Canada said the section of the pipeline along the right of way, approximately 35 miles south of London Pump Station in Marshall County, South Dakota, was completely isolated with 15 minutes and emergency procedures were activated. The, comp the company says that it is providing state and federal regulators with accurate and confirmed information on the ongoing basis. The spill is on the northernmost part of the Agala Aquifer, which provides water to the entire Midwest region. Uh, this is like one of those, uh, for a lot of people who were against the Keystone XL pipeline, will be a very I told you so kind of moment for them as well. So that kind of about does it for everything you need to know what's happening in the news. Uh, well, there's always something happening in the news. You, you can't, I can't talk about everything. I want to talk about more other things happening later in the show as well. But let's talk about some things where you can find out more information about me. You go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. Here I am talking right there on the picture. <laughs> if, you want to if you want to find other past interviews and more, you can go to our videos link page there as well uh, with other uh, past episodes and past things that are happening, dubbing stuff like Shift Friday and all sorts of wonderful things as well. But of course, as it is um, customary, after every uh, news report, I like to talk about some of the new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. And then when we come back, I'm going to talk about some new movies that have just come out this weekend. And then I'm going to grill them for absolutely no reason, because why not? Heads disconnected from bodies are, is not compatible with life. So it's, it's really about health and wellness. It's not about mental health versus other kinds of health. It's about health and wellness. And so I think this move towards better integration, um, I'm very fortunate to get to be the staff psychiatrist at Curry, as well as working at um, Providence St. Patrick. So, you know, I think the more we can integrate our ideas of health across a continuum, um, the better off we will be, particularly at destigmatizing things. Um, because these are hard conversations to have, but really, I, you know, as a physician, you ask a lot of hard questions. You ask all kinds of variety of hard questions, um, and this one is maybe hard, but the more fluent you get at asking the question, um, the better um, you become. Uh, and towered over Oliver Otis Howard, kind of occupies my altitude. And Joseph was strikingly handsome. You know, people who negotiated with him described mesmerizing encounters. He was someone who didn't just shake hands, he would clutch a hand and hold it. Uh, he would uh, gaze deep into people's eyes. It was a practice that showed strength and immense confidence, but also a certain irresistible vulnerability. All ethical laws, rules, and regulations, uh, when we begin focusing more closely on issues such as critical habitat, which is also the subject of ongoing theory. But yes, it, it is something that folds in very deeply with the regulatory reform. Excuse me, sure. is that? Oh, oh, oh. Sorry. He, he raised his hand first. Just out of hospitality. Then I would like to say it's amazing the quality of civil servants at the U.S. Department of the Interior. Um, and, and we will get to you, and I, I promise. Uh, to me, when I was a junior political, I joined in 2001. Uh, I, had, I was at a law firm called Aikenville. I had very little knowledge of what actually went on in the Interior Department. I have to tell you, it was one of the best experiences of my life. My family was incarcerated for four and a half years. Uh, they never talked about the experience. So, and then we also knew not to ask. There was just this unspoken um, energy in the house that um, it was something that was not to be asked about. And uh, only once in a while would my mother share anything about it. So, uh, I, I am a trained psychologist and um, I realized that, you know, I may have become that because I was trying to understand my own life. And so the making of the film uh, was really a result of, of my own discovery process.
Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for some pre-critic. Uh, it's the section of the show, uh, segment in the show, sorry, where I basically prejudge movies before I have any knowledge of what they're really about, which, you know, most movies are pretty much the same in my opinion. So let's start off with DC's The Avengers um, from the director of such films as The Avengers and also, Dawn of Justice, that's Batman vs. Superman, just so you guys know, um, brings the intro to the DC comic book team-up, Justice League. What started out as a crossover that uh, that had your favorite superheroes during the golden era of comics fighting a star, a giant starfish, um, comes a dark, gritty reboot, more dark, grittier than you ever remember and will soon not forget. Join Batflick on his journey to make friends and even more enemies that will make you think, why? <laughs> you can't just make a bunch of movies and expect them to be better or just as good as the other. Watch the uh, petri dish of characters who end up just hanging out, battling faceless enemies in a movie that's just going to be what people expect. Up next, we got Watch This Family Story about a boy who was born disfigured as he navigates his life from homeschool to public school in this feel-good family romp where looks don't mean anything. Of course, how many times are they going to make this movie where they say, I don't care if you have insert disability here, I still love you. Because it's been done time and time again. But enjoy wonder as they t take a story based on a book because the author felt bad about pre-judging, uh, pre-reacting, pre-criticizing a little girl with burns on her face and fearing that her three-year-old would make a scene and instead <laughs> made a scene herself. Seriously, this basically book is a uh, uh, it's because of prejudged guilt from a little girl who had burn on s burns on her faces. That's why she wrote this book, and it's completely fictitious. Yeah, that's that, the, like I looked it up on Wikipedia. And I was like, what? So the whole point of or the reason why she wrote this book is because she, she felt bad about how she reacted. All right, okay, moving on. Um, do you like Denzel Washington? I don't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you don't, and you should see a movie that's basically like, okay, here's the deal. It's a movie about a lawyer who works for a prestigious law firm, but the law firm is not all what it seems. Uh-oh. And now he has to in, in internal crisis of whether or not he's going to um, quit his nice uh, big firm job or basically uh, give up his, uh, I guess, his ethics? So basically, that's kind of what most, uh, if you ever watch a movie where it's about a lawyer being a lawyer, this always seems to be like the biggest kind of case where it's just like, oh, the huge law firm is very evil. Or, 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 I, I don't know about this. It's like, oh, I, I like the paycheck, though. But, oh, no, uh, I don't think I should do this. But anyways, long story short, he probably ends up exposing the firm and losing his job, go to private practice, and is more humble, independent lawyer who helps people. So, yeah, it's that kind of movie. And that's pretty much it for Pre-Critic. I have another movie for you guys that are um, that was made from our flagship video. So this is Flagship Friday featuring some of the kids at Washington Middle School. Welcome to detention. Any questions? Yes. In the bathroom. Go. Yes. Any other questions? Uh, I don't care. Feet Woo. off the desks. zombies and I'm done with my milk.
today's episode of Wake Up Missoula is sponsored by Short and Sweet. Let's make it short and sweet today, this morning on Wake Up Missoula. But let's kick things off with a little thing that's happening in the city of Missoula. So if your kids are interested in going out and playing around and doing some indoor fun activities, because, you know, let's face it, the weather's getting colder. And it's trying to. It's hard to get your kids who are antsy to, uh, you know, kind of like uh, relieve some of their energy and um, ants in their pants, basically. So... They have Mismo Gymnastics, uh, Roots Acro Sports Center, and uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena does um, indoor tumble and play in a giant padded uh, building full of foam pits and basically a lot of child-proof areas so you don't have to worry about your kid hurting themselves on uh, sharp objects. But I guess, you know, just falling down on pads is, I guess, you know, if you're not afraid of that, then that that's your place for you. And that basically happens from um, 9.30, 10 a.m. all the way until about noon-ish. A couple of them have, might have some things in the afternoon as well, but that's kind of like the gist of it. Uh, Tiny Tales is happening at the Missoula Public Library, and that is a uh, basically a unique uh, program. It's held every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at 10.30 a.m., Babies ages birth to three years of age are invited to attend, and they're accompanied by an adult lap. Participants uh, will sing songs, learn finger plays, and nursery rhymes, and hear stories. Um, this program um, is usually held downstairs in large meeting room, but otherwise it's held elsewhere if it's not there. Family story time is also at Missouri Public Library, and this is for three to five-year-olds, and this is for kids who are more engaged in learning how to read. Um, and this happens Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. All at 10.30. Of course, Sunday is the 1.30 p.m. because, you know, it's Sunday. Um, yarns and water coloring is going to be at the Missoula Public Library starting at noon. So if you're interested in knitting and crocheting and doing all sorts of things with yarns. And, you know, it is holiday season. You want to make uh, – y- it's probably <laughs> – uh, an easy, cheap way to give you your family member a gift by say, "Here, I knit you this scarf." Oh, thanks. Oh, oh thank you. <laughs> and of course, watercoloring. If you want to learn how to watercolor and work with that, they usually ask that people are 18 and up for these particular ones at the Missoula Public Library. So, just be aware of that. Um, if you're interested in playing bridge or cribbage, cribbage is my uh, my OG game of choice with cards. Um, go to Missoula Senior Center starting at 12:30 ish, and you can you. Know, just play. It, that, it's just like a drop-ins and just hang out. You play like you, you pay uh, like 150. Um, but if you if you can't pay, they won't make you pay. But 150 is kind of it's not steep. It's not steep. Um, teen Writers Group is at Musa Public Library. Uh, this is for uh, teens who just need a, need a little bit uh, more writing skills and uh, get some positive uh, cr- uh, critic a uh, critic critiques positive critiques on their writing as well. Um, and you can join the Teen Writers Group. You have your inner artist flourish. Um, of course, meeting places do vary, but they're usually in the uh, young adult section of the library. And then they'll know where to send you. You just have to talk to the librarians. like, hey, where's the Teen Writers Group? It's like, I'll go right over there. Like, cool. Uh, so that happens uh, basically right after school at 3.30 today. A cat Soup Raffle. University of Montana uh, is doing uh, basically a, it's the whole idea is that's can the cats and it's been going on for the last 18 years, and they've only won, and the University of Montana Grizzlies have only won twice over the last 18 years against the Bozeman Cats. Uh, they're our rivals. Um, hot chocolate provided by UM Dining Ice Cream from Sweet Peaks, activities, and music. Wow, they really want people to donate cans of food. <laughs> but of course, uh, they have some propane heaters, but if it gets too snowy and wet, they'll move it into the UC atrium. So just be in the Basically, the general area, I think, is between the Mansfield Library and the UC Center Center. Um, so you can check that out. And it all starts at 4 p.m. tonight. And of course, it's probably an ongoing thing because it's a d- donation thing. But this is when they're having a gathering event. So why not check it out? Family Friendly Friday kicks off your nightly events. And um, you can enjoy uh, some um, Family Friendly Friday at the Top Hat where you can go out and drink while your kids run around and play. Um, make sure they don't touch the musicians' instruments because I've seen that way too many times and too many people yell at them. It's like, stop that. So it's a good excuse to be noisy because if you've ever been in a Top Hat, it's never not quiet. Um, so Missoula Medi- uh, Medical Aid Salsa Ball and Silent Auction. That's a mouthful. MCT is hosting a uh, Missoula, AIDS, uh, Missoula Medical Aid's annual Salsa Ball and Silent Auction. There's going to be live music, dancing, drinks, uh, and auction items. So it's just a gathering to uh, support Missoula Medical Aid. And that starts at 7 p.m. tonight. And another thing that's happening at the University of Montana is jazz music. If you're interested in some jazz music, the University of Montana is the place to be. Um, so they're... Uh, title of this jazz performance is Don't Get Sassy. Um, UM Jazz uh, pr- a program to uh, pay tribute to jazz, jazz luminary Thad Jones. Um, 
so what basically it is is a student ensemble series by the University of, of Montana Jazz Big Bands and a tribute to Thad Jones. Um, it's happening tonight at three uh, seven thirty p.m. It's going to be at the Denison Theater. It's six dollars for seniors, five dollars for students, and you can always contact Rob Tapper of the UM uh, Jazz Program for more information as well. So um, that's kind of what's happening then and there. Here are your late night events. You got Tallis Orion, um, I am I Voodoo Horseshoe, and. Uh, Ocelot Wizard is going to be at the VFW tonight. It's going to be a mixture of rock music and hip hop. Uh, Hayes uh, Krill is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge. Uh, the Shiver is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. And Russ Snesset and the Revelators is going to be at the Union Club. But I have an um, um, art clip for you guys, which is going to end on December 10th. And this is from the Gallery of the Visual Arts. So you guys get to enjoy this just before the end of the University of Montana fall semester. All right, let's talk about some Saturday events that are happening Saturday, November 18th, 2017, tomorrow. Uh, speech and debate and drama meet is happening at the University of Montana. This is Iola Sacred Heart is looking for uh, uh, some folks to sue some judges, to be some judges. Sorry, man, I'm just trying to make things up. And th the whole wording of this is kind of all over the place. So no previous experience required. They're asking for judges to sign up online by going to a very convoluted website. You can always go to MizzouEvents.net to find out that link and more. You can call uh, the person to be a judge at 728-7363, and they'll be happy to assist you in signing up. They'll be hosting uh, judging clinics, and it's also optional. So if you've already been judge, judge um, debates and speeches, you can feel free to opt out as well. Uh, they want confident judging. The clinics will be held the week of the tournament on uh, basically this whole week. But apparently um, the whole speech and debate says that they, they uh, and of course you, f you can feel free uh, to forward this to your colleagues, friends, and family, to your friends sign up too. Um, the Iola Sacred Heart is known for their really strong and undefeated speech and debate team. So be aware, it's going to be quite a uh, interesting event happening th this weekend as well. The Ultimate Crafts Fair is going to be the Mo University of Montana UC Ballroom, and so if you're at the university anyways, you can go, d go enjoy some craft fair as while this is happening. So there's a lot happening in around th that particular area during this time. So the craft fair starts at 9. You can come check out Missoula's premier craft show. Um, so basically it's a bunch of people come together and they sell you crap. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so Missoula win <laughs> Valley Winter Market. I, I'm just like so negative. <laughs> I'm just like, what, what do you what do you expect? It's like exactly what you what you want. And some people like it, some people don't. And I'm just like, cool, great. Well, I'll 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 just put it in storage and never see it again. <laughs> Missoula Valley Winter Market, Missoula Senior Center. So if you want your um, farmers market fix um, during the winter, Missoula Senior Center is hosting a f winter market at their location, which is just across from uh, uh, oh God, Big Dipper Ice Cream. 
uh, I think it's off of 6th Street, and it starts at 9 a.m., and it goes until about 1 p.m., just kind of like the whole kind of idea of having a farmer's market. So they have all that. They have cheeses, meats, and all, all sorts of wonderful things that you can get during uh, winter's farmer's market. Uh, um, of course, the Zoo Town City Crafts Fair. So more crafts are happening as well. Holiday Inn in downtown at the park. Uh, come join for the 5th Annual Zoo Craft Art Fair. Um, w wonderful vendors support local stuff, so uh, that's what's happening. Uh, they have the Ar the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation is doing a kids event, and they're learning about tracking. Come to the Rocky Mountain Elk Foundation to learn about tracking. Use Laser Shot to explore the visitor center. It's a free event from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. The Southgate Mall will be hosting Santa also this weekend. Um, so basically get your Santa fix on and get your Christmas cards all ready to go because the Southgate Mall will be presenting Santa Claus this weekend. And basically he'll be working well until the Christmas holidays as well. So yeah, it's a good time to get your kids all together, put a little Santa hand on the babies, and just take some pictures with Santa Claus. And also uh, starting at 1 p.m. on Saturday this weekend as well as every Saturday, MCAT does our Saturday drop-ins. MCAT Saturday drop-ins, where kids come to create and learn how to use stop animation and as well as learn how to make movies and how to create a story using Lego figurines. So here's a nice little picture of Sophia, who's been in our uh, summer camps for the last couple years. Um, she's a wonderful uh, little model for us, um, and those are some of the Legos that we have here, amongst various others, courtesy of some of the donations from our staff here at MCAT as well. And people like to donate. If you don't, if you have some Legos as well and you want to donate to MCAT for some stop animation stuff, we're welcome to take anything that you give us. And this happens every single Saturday, and it's only for ten dollars, and it's for kids aged nine to thirteen. But we're pretty much uh, lenient when it comes to uh, maybe a little a year or two older, or maybe a year or two younger, really depending upon what their level is of maturity, and depending upon that. But of course, if, if you know, we try to keep an open communication with the parents. But it's a nice way for ki parents just to drop their kids off and do that kind of thing. But also. Uh, while we're talking about some kids stuff, before I get back into events, I just want to say that MCAT will be hosting a kind of like a winter camp for some of the kids for the uh, dog days of winter during the holiday break. We'll be doing it Wednesday through Friday, and I'll tell you more details about it as well, but I'm just giving you kind of like the, the lowdown of some of our camps. So it's going to be a, a 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. kind of deal with uh, other services after care provided as well for some kids. But it's basically just a MCAT, a video making, a short animation drop-in type things for kids. Um, when, so for, for parents who have, are having trouble basically finding some care while they have to go back to work after the Christmas weekend. So just letting you guys know, just kind of like the down low, I'll give you some more details as we get into it. But let's get back to some of the events that are happening Saturday as well. There's Francis Davis, West of Love. Shakespeare and Company, join Francis Davis from Dillon, Montana, all the way from Dillon, Montana, is reading from his collection of short stories, West of Love, starting at 1 p.m. Sewing for Guys and Girls uh, is happening at the Home Resource Community Room. For citizens who will get an introduction to sewing machines, make a small book bag, and receive patterns to take home. All materials will be provided. And if you're, if you're a guy and you've always wondered, be like, hey, you know what? Um, I would like to learn to sew. Or you basically think about it more like this. Hey, I would like to make my own clothes, so therefore I w w won't have to buy my own clothes and save money. Think about it on that practicality, because that's the reason why I'd want to sew, to make my own clothes. But yes, they're doing that. It's called Sewing for Guys. It's got home, um, home resource community room at 2 p.m. tomorrow. You can't miss it. Missoula Folklore Society Family Dance is happening at 3 p.m. If you're interested in doing some dance, uh, they're doing uh, contra dances. It's kind of like a folk kind of dancing just before country dancing kind of lessons. So just think about it kind of like that. It's family dance. It happens from 3 to 4.30 p.m. And of course, they have an evening contra dance, which have workshops, work, workshops at 7.30 p.m. It's a, a nonprofit society here in the city of Missoula which teaches dance to anybody who wants to learn it. And it's not a one-on-one -on -one time to dance. You don't have to be forced with a partner. You basically kind of work with a group thing. It's a big group dance thing. I've done it before. They do it first night in Missoula as well, and it's great. Zoo Town's Got Talent. Um, let's move on, segue. There's, I have no segues. I just want to move on. Uh, MCT Center for Performing Arts is doing a Zoo Town's Got Talent. It is a regional competition showcasing high school's talent. All proceeds go to the First Step Program in Missoula, a local nonprofit organization, uh, organization that assists victims of sexual and domestic abuse. So 
it's going to a good cause and it's a good way to showcase some talent as well uh, so for some of the high school students um, of the Missoula area teens so can they show off either this musical talents juggling um, various things I don't know I don't know how many I don't know how talented teens are and it's a good way to find out if there's any talent from the MC uh, from MCT tomorrow night at 7 p.m. So that's kind of what is going on for your uh, weekend events. If you're interested in doing some uh, late night events as well, absolutely with Chris Moon, DJ Music is going to be at the Ballander late night tonight, tomorrow night. Sorry, Donna and Donna the Buffalo is going to be rock music at Top Hat Lounge. Nashville 406 is going to be country music at the Sunrise Saloon. Nashville 406 will be at the Sunrise Saloon. So it's going to be a double feature of country music. Uh, Megatron Gypsies is going to be the Dark Horse um, rock music um, karaoke at VFW. And the Tomcats is going to be at the Union Club. So that's kind of what's happening there. If you want more information, you go to MissoulaEvents.net. MissoulaEvents.net is basically, what's up, Missoula? What's going on, Missoula? Well, here it is. This is what's up in Missoula. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being very sassy this morning. I have no idea. I didn't even have coffee. <laughs> Maybe I'm just angry. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for joining me this morning. If you want more information, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice. Be sure to like and subscribe and follow on Twitter, Facebook, and on YouTube um, under the pseudonym of Wake Up Missoula. I'm totally sure I'm not using that word right, but just be aware that's that's it's all about it. Wake Up Missoula, dude. I'm um, just talking about Missoula and talk about some things that are happening in Missoula as I know it. Um, here is MCAT.org for more information about our Saturday drop-ins every Wednesday as well. We host. Um, uh, orientation and training. So if anybody wants to get a leg up in learning about MCAT and learning about that and more, you can go to MCAT.org. You can also submit a program. Of course, the programs that you saw that I showed you, of which can be airing on MCAT, can be um, requested by uh, anybody in the community, but you have to be a local area nonprofit to get uh, a deal with us. So all you got to do is go to MCAT.org and go to how do I request event recording? And, you and if you already have a recording or a program, you can always submit a program. It's that easy, that simple. We're always looking for new content. Uh, we can put anything on. Heck, I'm on, so anything goes pretty much. <laughs> so thanks for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp, and here is an original song um, courtesy of GarageBand. So I don't know if it's that original. So d d here it is. <laughs> 